So in the last video located right up here, we went over how to export a single idea out into stems and then bring it into a DAW in order to then do all of the sequencing inside of the DAW of our choice. But there were some mixed reviews. A lot of people really like to export out of the MPC and then do all the sequencing inside the computer. But a lot of others feel that since the MPC is a full standalone solution, we should be able to sequence a full song inside of the MPC, which it's a little confusing at first, but there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. So in this video, we're gonna go over a couple of different areas. First, we're gonna go over subtractive sequencing. Now. We've covered this in past videos, but what this idea is, is that we're taking the busiest part of a song, copying it to different sequences, and then just subtracting the elements we don't want in order to build our track into the busiest part, like the chorus or the hook. Then after that, we're gonna take all those individual sequences that we've just made, the intro, the verse, the pre, and the chorus, and we're gonna link them together in song mode so we then have a song but we're gonna do it in a way that utilizes the track mutes because inside of the MPC, the muting of a pad on a program isn't remembered when you switch in between the different sequences. But if you explode a track such as all the drums are now on their own individual track, each sequence will memorize the mute state of that track, making it really easy to just mute tracks inside of the different sequences and then lay them out into your full song. But make sure you stick around to the end because we will be then going back into the song, bringing back some elements to add a little push, a little pull in the track. So let's just jump right into the MPC. Now, before we jump into the meat and potatoes of the video, let's just have a listen to the idea that we're going to be sequencing out and turning into a full song. Now this idea is made up of a drum track and then about four instances of the hype synth. So anybody can just download the project from the Patreon link below if you wanna follow along and come up with your own sequenced version of this. So the drums real quick sound like this. Then we have a little pad. Then we bring in the bass. And on this bass, there is some automation on the filter cutoff, which we'll cover in a future video. Some pizzicato strings. and some held out strings here that are pumping along with the beat. And that's pretty much what everything is made up of. And as you can hear, this is the busiest part of the track. So before we get into anything, I'm just gonna rename this the chorus. Now, subtractive sequencing is what we're gonna be doing here, which is taking the busiest part, the chorus, duplicating this sequence to multiple different sequences, and then simply muting the elements we don't want in there. However, there's a critical step we have to do before we do this, which is exploding this drum track on track number one. The reason being where if we just muted the pads inside of this drum program, it won't be memorized inside of the sequence. However, if we break out the sounds from track one into multiple different tracks where each sound is on its own individual track, the sequence will remember which tracks were muted inside of that sequence, thus making it a lot easier just to mute the elements we don't want in that sequence. So before we get into copying and pasting this sequence into other sequences to mute the tracks, we have to come here to the pencil tool, go to explode the track. Once that's exploded, Track number one will be muted. And if we go into our track mutes, we can see that these other instruments, kick, clap, clap number two, snare, perk, perk number two, shaker, and the vocal are all on their own track, allowing us to mute that and have the sequence remember the mute state of that track. So let's go back to our main screen, come up here to the pencil tool, and we're just gonna start copying over the sequence. So we already have our chorus. I'm going to kind of go backwards on this one and let's call this the pre, hit do it. 
and I can just continue without leaving this menu to then copy this sequence again. This is going into sequence number three and we're gonna call this the verse. Do it. And then one more time and we're gonna call this the intro going into slot number four. Hit do it. And now when we come out to our main, we're gonna see that we're on our intro and now we can just kind of have a listen by muting some of these different tracks and see what we would like to start off the song with. So let's say we want to start off with just this vocal and maybe we put in the pads, which are on track number two. Side note, I do suggest that you go through and name all the individual tracks by what's actually on there to make it easier for you to remember while you're going through and muting the different tracks. Let's have the pad, let's have some of the claps maybe to keep a little bit of groove and push. All right, so that's kind of a simple intro, but I really like it. And now let's go into the verse and maybe add a couple more drums to give it a little bit more push. Maybe we add the little string pluck that's in there and see how that sounds. The easiest way to do that is we don't have to leave this window. We can just tap right up here. And remember, we're going backwards through our sequences. So by turning the knob to the left, we are now in the verse. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and mute everything that we didn't have in the first part. And if you forget, you can just flip back into the intro. So now this is everything that was in the intro, but since this is the verse, let's give it a little bit more of a push by adding the kick. Let's say the snare comes in, the shaker comes in, and let's add the pluck strings from track number four. <laughs> Cool, so that's the verse, but now let's go into the pre-chorus here. And inside of the pre, I wanna keep that vocal one shot. I don't really want any of the drum sounds because by taking those out, the chorus will hit harder. I wanna take the plucky strings out, but I wanna bring in the bass. So let's have a listen to our pre. then our pre going in to our chorus. All right, so that's gonna be our rough idea for the intro into the verse, into a pre-chorus, and then into a chorus. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna link all these scenes together and then convert it to a new sequence, which is going to essentially be our song. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go into menu right here, and we're gonna look for song mode right here on song mode. Now the way song mode works is we see all of our different sections. They should be listed and labeled right here. And then we actually have the structure of the song over here on the left. So we're gonna first insert, and by default, it's gonna to go to the very first one. And you would think that you should just be able to hit all these guys if you know an easier way to do this, please let me know in the comments below. But the way I typically do it is I click right up here and I'm gonna say, okay, first I'm gonna start off with the intro and then I'm going to insert and I'm gonna go from the intro to the verse, insert again, and we're gonna go from the verse to the pre and then that pre is gonna drop into the chorus. Now one thing to note, if you had a shorter sequence for any of these sections right here, you can repeat it a number of times, and that is right here. By clicking on that, we could say, we want our intro to repeat two times, three times, or four times. Since we made all these sequences at eight bars, I'm just gonna all have them play one at a time. So now that this is laid out, you simply have to convert to sequence, right there at the bottom. And it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna convert it and put it on sequence number five, and it's including the muted tracks. Do it, come back to our main, and now we're gonna come up to our sequence, and if we flip over to number five, we can see that number five is from song one, unnamed. 
and we can rename this, let's say, song, and then have a listen to our playback. We hear that we just have that pad and the vocal stab. Drum should come in here for the verse. pre-chorus for the bass. So the way this is working is that we have all of these in a linear fashion and the mute state is now automated. Now upon playback, we hear exactly what we expect to hear because we went through each one of those sequences and muted the tracks. But using this method can be a little bit confusing at times because if we go into any one of these tracks, we're gonna see that all of the information, all of the MIDI notes for each one of these is present throughout the entire length of this new song sequence. The reason is, is what's happening to turn on those tracks is the automation on the mute state of the track. So if we click down here to expand our automation, and then we click here to change our automation to the track mute, now we're able to see where this actual track is going to come in and where it's muted. So we can touch on the timeline up here and use that as a scrub to scrub through our linear timeline. So what we can do is we can take a listen to the bass and hear that it's muted up until the point of bar 17 where it comes in. And now those bars are in. So with this mute automation, it may sometimes feel like a bit of a workaround, but it also does have some benefits to it. Such as if I wanted to, let's say, bring this hi-hat in on the second half of the verse, I wouldn't have to go back and resequence all of these MIDI notes. I would simply have to take away the mute automation and bring them back in. So if we expand the lower, we have the hi-hats are pretty much muted all the way up until the chorus, but in the verse, I want to add the hi-hats to the second half and add a little bit of push. So I'm essentially just going to take away the mute between 13 and 17. So let's bring that down right there and then bring back the mute right here on 17 where the pre-chorus comes in. And this is going to bring our hi-hats just on the second half of the verse. So let's have a listen to how that sounds when we bring that back in just for a little bit of push right here. So our verse starts off right here. And hi-hats. Into the pre-chorus. So although that mute automation may seem like a workaround, it actually does have its benefits if you wanna quickly bring in certain elements and then take them back out again just to have a play around. Now, once you're happy with the way everything sounds and your song is arranged out, we're just gonna go ahead and did what we did in the previous video, which is go into our menu. We're gonna hit save. And from here, we go to audio mix down. If we wanted to export each one of these individually, we could go to explode tracks. But since we've completed our entire song inside the MPC, we're just gonna leave it at stereo mix down, hit export, save that file to wherever we want. And now we have a song fully created and sequenced on the MPC. So that was just one way that we can take an idea and fully flush it out into a completed song on the MPC without ever having to leave the unit itself. Now, I know that the mute automation may seem a little cumbersome at times, but if you use it to your advantage, it's a really quick and easy way to bring back little elements and test them out in different sections and see if it works. If you have ways that you like to sequence on the MPC, please leave a comment below. Maybe that will help out somebody else. Maybe it'll be the topic of a future video. Just really appreciate the feedback in such an active, engaged community. And make sure you keep your eyes on the channel because pretty soon we're gonna be dropping a video announcing the winner or winners of the free expansion giveaway. I was gonna do it earlier, but since we're so close to hitting 2,000 subscribers, just wanna wait to do it to celebrate 2,000 subscribers. So if you have anybody else that's into the MPC workflow or music production in general, because we will be expanding the videos on this channel, make sure to share this channel with them, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. On that note, 
Thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Now, I hope you go make something cool.